Good evening, or morning. Dr. Premold has been picked up for season two, and this time around, it's the year 2049, and everything is futuristic. The show intro has been revamped with holographic screens and a new art direction from the client. We've given you the new shot, some mood boards, some new fake UI elements, and a camera track. We want a techie, futuristic feel to the whole thing. Think you can swing it? Shall we play a game? Welcome, my friends, to the future. I feel a little spoiled getting these awesome mood boards provided to me. This is not something that I've encountered a lot on smaller jobs. And often there's not time even to make them. And yet, if you look at some of the best future UI work being done out there, and we've got podcast interviews with a couple of really great FUI designers in this course, you learn that planning and research are a huge part of the deal. So as you look at these boards, notice not only just sheer style ideas, but also color, use of negative space, and of course how these suggest they might be animated and what they actually do. And for this particular exercise, you also have to keep in mind at least in the master shot, that we won't really be able to see a lot of details. So things that are stronger from a distance may read better. Although in this case, we also don't necessarily want to pull focus from the main scene. If you design something you like and you're putting together a reel, of course, you can always do a cutaway just to what you designed and animated. Not only that, but you don't even have to take those mood boards and design your own screens because we have some pre-designed screens for you. These are in a very specific color range. And what I would suggest to you, if your main intention is just to complete the exercise, is to keep it fairly simple in terms of what you're going to animate here. Because at the scale we're at, a lot of things won't read too much, and mostly we want the feeling of it being a busy, futuristic lab. There are also these great logos to choose from for the end of the sequence. This time around, we're also starting you out with an After Effects project. It contains the elements we were just looking at, the raw footage, which we can take a look at in a moment, and a couple of comps. And the way these are organized is there's a working comp that has the actual 3D track, including some stand-in planes in it, and a render comp that just has uh, that, along with the sound, which I've turned off here, and a little reference frame. If we go in the working comp and I unshy the toggle layer at the top, you see a lot of layers that were shied out. If I select them all, we move through the scene, you can see that we have a bunch of tracking points for you to work with, and you can see where some of these have formed the basis for those stand-in planes that you see in the shot. So this gives you a lot of latitude to make full use of this professional track from Synthize. The dolly tracks are gonna present a slightly extra challenge here because of these rays of light that show up at the beginning of the scene. And so I'd like to give you a bit of a hint here. Here's the plane for the ground. And what I'm gonna do, just as I did in the lesson, is boost up the exposure so that I can see the actual color of those blacks and let's go ahead and change the solid to that color. And just sample it there. And now if I raise the opacity, and I can even use a darken mode, which isn't gonna make a big difference, but now I can find the threshold where those tracks disappear. I probably wanna put some grain on this. Uh, another thing that I can do, let's turn it off, is actually mask it just around the area that I need. And I'm going to do a really sloppy version of this. 
just like that. And so, yeah, that with a bit of grain, bring the exposure back down. And now the issue is that we have a hole between those rays there. There's something else over here that you probably need to knock out as well. So for the rays, another hint, I'm going to go ahead and just make myself a ray line here. I did not want the text tool, but the pen tool and go down like that. And now I'm going to make this a bigger stroke, make it the color of those rays. If I, again, add a bit of grain to them and then use, say, a lightened blending mode, then you won't see so much of a seam there and, you know, give it a bit of blur and so on. And you should be able to restore those rays. Another potential gotcha that I want to actually just walk you through because there's no reason to make this mistake. I've made it before and it just is annoying. It has to do with reflections. So there's cast light here and an illuminated screen. And so the surface here should be somewhat reflective of the screen. Now we're not going to do anything tricky like ray tracing. We're just going to do a brute force on this. So first thing I'm going to do is throw a gradient so we can see what's up and what's down. And I'll duplicate the layer. I'm not going to bother to label or anything like that right now. I'm going to switch to the anchor point tool so I can move the anchor point down to the bottom. And that will make it easy to then uh, take this guy and actually move the layer down. Not very far, maybe kind of just down to the surface. Now, the common mistake that's made is to just rotate it 90 degrees and there's a reflection should be held out to the top. But even if you look a little more closely, you can see that's not right. Why is it not right? The reflection and the surface is effectively mirrored. It's effectively a mirror surface. I need to go carefully on the x-axis, 45, 90. And then it should be equidistant. So whatever the surface is, it should be as far in the other direction as it is above. And you have to kind of imagine that but just keep in mind that this other screen is not right down on the surface. So the reflection should not be either. I'll do a crude holdout because you're probably looking at this going, well, what the heck? That shouldn't be all the way down the side. Is that what he means? No, it is not. I just mean it should look like that. You could reduce the opacity, of course. You could blur it out if that feels warranted. But that is more like how an actual reflection should behave. Here is your Dr. Premolt green screen footage. I believe you know what to do here. One thing I'll mention, uh, if I haven't already, is sometimes in visual effects you will actually turn the camera to portrait mode if you're taking a stand-up of a VFX element because you get so much more resolution. I'm not saying that's what we did here. I don't think we did. I think this just cropped to save some data on your end. But uh, his clipboard here is a big shiny reflector. So obviously you're going to need to garbage mat that. And I think the level of difficulty here is going to be really similar to what you've already seen. And finally, as you design your GAC and distortions and so on, keep in mind that you can use the same tools as we have, but you can set them differently. So I had this idea that in the future, a lot of the distortion and glitching is more digital and fine lined. And so all I did here was take a regular fractal noise pattern. I used a block pattern and I'll just reset the width for a moment. So that's what block looks like at the default. And then all I did was change the width and height so that it's very wide and not as high. And now I've got this great glitch map. And so what I like to do when I'm testing things is sometimes use a checkerboard or a gradient. In this case, here is a gradient where I've put that fractal layer at the bottom and I have set it with a displacement map. And that is glitching out the gradient in a really, I think, pretty cool looking way. Make yourself little test beds if that's what you like to do and just have a little fun 
not trying to reinvent the wheel, but just taking it in more the direction that we saw in some of that design reference. Now, as always, scale what you do on this one shot sequence according to what you actually want to get feedback on. So if animating the content of the screens isn't really going to give you anything useful from the TA who reviews your work, that's fine. You can just comp those screens in, maybe get those reflections going, get the title at the end, and then go ahead and remove the dolly tracks. I gave you a little boost on that. And then um, whether it's the hologram or whether it's the end logo, uh, give it that futuristic look if you're feeling it. Because I feel that this is a project that you can personalize and show how you took it in a specific direction uh, beyond just what you got with your elements. At the end of this exercise, what I'm hoping you'll be more comfortable with in some way or another is making your own effects. Think of this like cooking or baking, confectionery, or even cocktail making. You can go and buy a pre-made mix or sauce and just use that. You can get really good quality ingredients and just use those. Or you could start to develop a sense for how things work and make your own cocktail or make your own recipe based on what you know about the ingredients. And then you don't have to rely on somebody else's recipe or some pre-bought mix. You're actually going and getting the ingredients and making decisions about what you want them to be. And if this sounds really pretentious, maybe it is, but maybe this actually will open a door for you to just get away from kind of looking for the right plugin. Now, plugins have gotten really good, and some of them provide you with a lot of options to still customize them and make your own, which didn't used to be the case. But there are also a lot of cases where people go looking for a plugin, and really the things you need to achieve what you're trying to do are already right there. So, my hope is this will open you up to kind of playing in that way. It's a really common thing in music to start with something, add something else, and then mess with that, and that becomes your output. If you're not following me down this rat hole, then that's okay. But have fun this week, and I'll see you next time. Ah! Uh -huh.